Doctrine has another library called Migrations, which offers additional features and functionality on top of DBAL and ORM for database schema versioning. Migrations are like versioning system for your database. So just like when using Git, you can have multiple team members pull in the code and work on it, with Migrations now, they can also get the database set up properly and always be in sync. We can install the Migrations library using the composer, so we'll open the terminal and run composer require doctrine migrations. Next we need to create the migrations configuration file called migrations.php and we need to copy this little snippet of code and paste it into that file. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to open the code, open the project within the project root, we'll create migrations.php and we'll paste that in. The table storage is where the migration versions will be stored. Doctrine uses this to track which migrations were executed. We're going to leave these as defaults, but we do need to update the migration paths. Doctrine will try to locate the migration files from these paths. So we're going to change my project migrations to simply migrations and we'll change the path to just migrations as well. So this is the namespace and this is the actual path. We're going to keep the rest of the options with their default values. You can check the documentation for the description of these options and some of the other options that you can use, but for now we're good with the defaults. Next, we need to configure the connection for our migrations because Doctrine needs to know where and how to connect to the database. The simple way is to just have the migrations DB config file that returns an array of connection params as shown in the documentation right here. It's the same configuration options that we used when we were setting up the DBAL connection in the DBAL lesson. Since we're working with the ORM and have an app that uses Entity Manager, we could use the connection from the existing app using Entity Manager. So if we scroll down here a little bit more, we see some snippet of code that contains Entity Manager that we could use. So let's copy that and we need to create the CLI config.php file and paste that code in. We need to import the PHP file here and we do need to modify this a little bit. As you remember in the previous lessons, we were working with the playground PHP file that we were already setting up the entity manager and so on. So we could copy some of the code from there. We can copy the entity manager part, we can copy the parameters part, and we can copy the loading part of the environment variables. So we'll copy this section and we'll replace these right here. We're going to move this up right here. Let's import .env. And the other things that we need to change is that we need to get rid of the dir name here because we are in the project root and we also need to adjust where the entities are being loaded from. Since we're in project root, we need to add app here because entity directory is within the app directory. We could of course grab the entity manager from the app instance if we were bootstrapping the app and configuring the entity manager there, but we're not doing that in this lesson. So we're just going to keep things simple. Now, before we actually create and generate migrations, we need to create a new directory called migrations. Because as you remember in the migrations.php, we are mapping the migrations name space to migrations directory. So we need to create that directory right here. We can generate a sample migration class via doctrine migrations generate command. So we'll open the terminal, we'll do vendor bin doctrine migrations generate. As you can see, this has created a new class within the migrations directory and the class name begins with the version followed by the date time. We can run and execute the migration using this command or we can roll back and revert migration using this command. Let's open the migration class so that we can see what this up and down options actually mean. The migration classes must extend abstract migration class and they must provide at minimum up and down methods. The up method is what's ran when migration is executed forward. So we put the table creation logic here or column modification and so on. And the down method is executed whenever the migration is reverted or rolled back. So we would put the code here that reverts whatever was done in the up method. So for example, if we were creating a table in the up method, we would want to drop that table in the down method. If we were dropping a table or a column in the up method, we would want to create that table or column in the down method and so on. Just a quick note here that 
that you wouldn't want to revert or roll back migrations in production because it could destroy live data but it does come in handy during development so just keep that in mind that when using migrations in production you don't want to revert or roll back any of the migrations we can override some of the methods that are provided by the abstract migration class to extend the functionality for example if we scroll down here we see that we have some methods like pre-app and post-app which get triggered before and after the app method is executed we have methods like pre-down and post-down which get executed before and after the down method is executed and so on so let's actually create the table with this migration we're going to create a new users table which we don't currently have as you can see the up and down methods have access to the schema object and then we can use schema object to create tables columns and so on so we can do schema create table users we can assign this to a variable we can then add the columns to it by calling add column method on the table object so let's add id username and create it at columns we can pass the proper types here and as the third argument we could pass some options if we wanted to let's set the primary key to the id column and then we also need to set the id column to be auto incremented now in the down method we need to revert whatever it is that we did in the up method and in this case we're creating the users table so we need to drop the users table in the down method so again we'll use the schema object and we'll call drop table method and pass users as an argument let's run the migrations we could run a single migration file or we could run all the necessary migrations to get to the latest version let's run the multiple migrations even though we just have a single migration file the command for that is doctrine migrations migrate let's hit enter and looks like it executed without any errors let's open and refresh the database and sure enough we have the users table in addition to the users table we also see doctrine migration versions table which was also created this is a table that doctrine uses to track the versions so if we open this we see that this migration class was executed at this time and this is how long it took to execute that migration we can pass an optional version or the version alias to the migrate command which will run the migrations to that point if we don't provide the argument by default it's going to run the up method for all the migrations from the current version until the latest one we could roll back or revert the migrations by providing a version that is older than the current version or we can pass the version alias first as the argument which will roll back the migrations all the way to the first version what it's going to do is that it's going to run the down method on all the migrations up until the first version if we refresh the database now we see that the users table is gone and the doctrine migration versions table is empty the other version aliases that we could use are the prev next and latest where prev will roll back to the previous version the next will migrate to the next version and the latest will migrate all the way to the latest version we could also get the status of our migrations by running the status command so instead of the migrate we'll do status and as you can see it gives us a nice outline or the status of our migrations now in addition to writing migrations manually like this we can also generate migrations based on the difference between the entities and the actual database schema which is very handy when working with ORM and entities so let's run the diff command and see what it does and as you can see it has generated a new migrations file so let's open that migration file and as you can see it is dropping the email emails and tickets table and the reason for that is because we don't have the entities for the emails and tickets tables these are the tables that were created in some of the previous lessons but we never created the entities for them and when we run the diff command the doctrine is able to identify the difference between the current database schema and the database schema that could be generated from our current entities and because we don't have the entities for the emails and tickets it is letting us know that we need to drop this table to have the entities and the current database schema kind of in sync now this is very useful to keep the database schema in sync with the entities because if we make changes in entities like create a different mapping or change a mapping or create a brand new entity we don't have to manually create the migration classes for it 
we can just generate the difference and have this automatically created for us. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to drop all the tables and run the diff again so that it generates the initial database schema and then we'll make some changes and run the diff again to see what happens. So I'm going to drop all these tables from here. We're also going to delete these migration files. Let's generate the diff again and sure enough it created the migration file. Let's open that and as you can see it is creating invoices and invoice items table with the proper foreign key. Let's run the migrate command and then refresh the database. And sure enough, as you can see, the invoice and invoice items tables were created along with the migration versions. And now our database schema and entities are in sync. Now let's add a new mapping in the invoice entity. Let's say that we wanted to add the due date of the invoice. So we'll open the invoice entity and we're going to duplicate the created at and we'll just change this to due date. Now, of course, if we try to create this entity, it would fail because we don't have the due date column in the database table. One option is to create the migration manually or we can run the diff command to see if this will automatically be generated. So let's run the diff command again. It created a new migration file. Let's open that migration file. And sure enough, it has detected the difference properly and it is adding a new due date column to the invoices table. Let's migrate the database, open the invoices table, and the column is there. Also, as you might have noticed, in addition to being able to create tables and columns using the schema object, we could also add the raw SQL as well. Some developers prefer the raw SQL instead of the object abstraction because it gives you all the necessary information on how the table is created without the need to remember what the default values of those methods are or what SQL it generates and so on. So this is it for this lesson and the end of the basic doctrine tutorial. We did not cover everything about doctrine, so if you want to know more about doctrine libraries, I encourage you to read the documentation. As I've said before, the main reason why I dedicated a few lessons to doctrine is because I think these are some of the important topics, in my opinion, that you're going to need when you do move on to frameworks. Things like what migrations are, how they work, what data mapper pattern is, what entities are, the ORM, DBAL, and so on. In a lot of cases, you will not be working with Doctrine directly, but will be working with it through some kind of framework like Symfony or Laravel, for example. In the next lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about the active record pattern, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, please smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks again, and as always, I'll see you next time.